y'all, welcome back to my number. episode number 174, D Friend Daily is here right now. Make sure you subscribe to not subscribe already. SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes. We're about to hop into this episode right now. We got a lot of these getting to. We got a couple Dr. Umar clips that I want to react to. We got this Destiny vs. Kostanat shit I want to discuss. And I also want to talk about the Jewish Defamation League being exposed by the FBI in 4K for extorting some of the rap legends Eazy E and Tupac before their death with fake death threats for money. We'll get to that. So make sure you subscribe to that subscribe already. SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes. So first thing that I'm going to discuss is the Dr. Umar Breakfast Club, Deion Sanders back and forth between Charlemagne and Dr. Umar. Before we get into it, I do want to say that I just hate with this whole Dion conversation that we are not able to see that there are two stories that can legitimately be discussed when it comes to Dion, right? You could be on the side of, oh, shit, he hold HBCUs and break down the reason why you think that Dion could have elevated HBCUs, which you could look at and say that is a valid point. Then there's also the pro Dion people that could be uh, saying, oh, well, he did this while he was there. He elevated Jack State to this point, and now he's just moving up to get the money. We could play HBCU coaches, never get black jobs. Now he's getting a black job. But then it's like a lot of – my thing with the pro Dion movement is they they miss out on a lot of nuances of the reason why that Dion is getting the opportunity that he's getting. They're like, oh, well, we've never seen an HBCU coach go on and get to move to a Pac-12, Big Five, let alone other bigger F I don't know FBS F, FCS schools. But it's like, bro, like it's Dion. Like, can we stop with the bullshit? I don't like that. Let's stop with the bullshit. He got that job because he's Dion. If Eddie George, if Hugh Jackson, maybe Hugh Jackson because he coached in the NFL, so he has like a, a little bit, of, I guess you would say a higher pedigree where he could probably go on and coach a bigger school. But not, let's take away Eddie George. Take, let's take away famous people. Let's take away Eddie George, Tennessee State. Let's take away Hugh Jackson with Grandma State. Let's talk about the guy who is coaching when well, him and Dion got to the back and forth. Uh, his name just escapes me at the moment. He could probably go 12 and 0 in the SWAC in the next two years. And he might possibly not get those jobs because. He is not Deion Sanders. They're not just getting Deion because he was great in the HBCU realm. And he was great in the SWAC. They're getting Deion because look at what Deion has done for them already. Season ticket requests have shot through the roof because Deion's there. Transfer portal players uh, already commits or people are already trying to run over there to be with Deion Sanders. The amount of social media followers Colorado has gained from Deion being there has exploded. The guy from the school, although he may be a great coach, he's not going to do that for them. So let's not be remiss as to why Deion Sanders, former greatest NFL player of all time, not former greatest, but like one of the greatest NFL players of all time, dual sport athlete, super personality, big primetime TV show. He was on NFL Network for how, I don't know, I watch that shit forever. Deion was always there. We're going to primetime street. We're going to run the highlights. Amazing personality. Great ambassador for the sport. That's why they got that. But like I said, there's two sides of the fucking conversation. That could be had. And I just wish when you discuss either side, you have to be genuine in what points you're discussing when it comes to these two sides. So let's get into Dr. Umar. I'm going to stop talking. Let's let him talk. He said, I'm so personally disappointed in Dion is I thought he was there for a movement, not for money. Meaning, Dion Sanders, the coach of Jackson. Sorry, point one, point there. That's the thing. That's the thing on the people that are like, I don't, I, when I say anti Dion, pro Dion, I don't really mean anti Dion as far as like, we want to demonize and kill Dion. I'm talking about the people like, kind of uh, perturbed by the move from Jackson State to uh, Colorado. One thing is, as people, we got to kind of stop putting our feelings of what we felt like Dion should do onto Dion. Even though you can say that, hey, some of the rhetoric that he did espouse in the beginning made it seem like this was his sole mission, right? God sent me here to do X, Y, and Z for the HBCUs. God sent me here to do this right here. And then I guess now that you've won a SWAC championship back-to-back -back years, now God has told you HBCUs have enough. Let's move on to the Pac-12. But once again, we kind of can't put our feelings onto Dion as a person. I foresaw a situation where Dion would hire other coaches, black NFL greats, to coach other HBCUs. In doing so, you attract our top tier high school athletes to come to maybe, HBCU. Maybe. Stay with me. Enjoy that Stay Tennessee. with me. Stay with me. Football and back. You know like I know, if you got top tier NFL greats coaching HBCUs, the athletes are coming maybe. just like they was coming for Dion. He showed you, Charlie. Dion, though. He showed Dr. you. And his other one's just as great. Famous people out and his other one's just as great. So listen. Enjoy that Tennessee State. That's, that's one person. We talk about a system, not other coaches. That thought process is right there. Like what Charlie been saying, oh, Eddie George, this, that. Eddie George there. It's like, there's a conversation to be had. Like, just being an NFL great won't get the result that you're looking for. Just being an NFL great, right? There's a lot of NFL greats that just 
went to work every day, held their lunch pail, and they put up great numbers. People in, uh, of this play of the town, they played them, loved them. But there's also a celebrity factor that drives American economy that needs to be in place as well when you're coaching at these schools to bring attention, to bring advertisers, to get fans excited, to do all these things. You have to have a, a certain personality level to do those things, right? To gain interest in HBCUs when people have historically not been too interested in HBCUs except for the people that probably um, went to these HBCUs. So like I said plenty of times, the only people I think, and there could be more, but I'm just naming the five that spark off the top of my head at the moment – that can bring a similar impact to the HBCU scene at being a head coach is one, Shannon Sharp, two, Michael Irvin, three, Ray Lewis, four, Chad Johnson, and five, Terrell Owens. The like and just as far as like personality, fame, the way they can do on social media, those are the five people I can see immediately. Now you could drop any names you want to drop in the comment section who you think could uh, provide the Dion effect for HBCU schools as well. But those are the five that jump out the page. And with that would come with us as people expecting these people to uproot their lives to go and take on this mission. And I think that's where it falters every time. I don't totally disagree with everything Charlemagne is saying because later in the clip he's going to bring up, you know, hey, well, maybe that's a us thing. Maybe we as people need to be funding these schools and not just rely solely on – um, sports or these athletes going out of their way to go and coach these people for these things to become bigger, more relevant, and just culture shifting as what you saw Dion did with Jackson State. Jackson State was everywhere. You had celebrities going there. You had celebrities wearing their merchandise. And you can hate celebrities, not like celebrities or not, but you got to admit, in society, when celebrities do things, regular people do things. That's just what it is. You see it over and over and over again. Celebrities don't get big brand sponsorships just because they're famous. It's because those big brand places know that when celebrities wear their shit or promote their shit, regular people are going to go and do the same exact thing because in society, people look at celebrities as higher than, greater than, they must know more, they must be all, whatever. That's just the reality of the fact. An uh, NFL great who nobody really talks about that much, Eddie George, even though he was a great football player. There's no disrespect to Eddie George. He doesn't have the social media presence. He doesn't have this the wow factor when you see that name. That's just a fact. That's just what it is. To bring all these athletes from high school to play football, basketball, so forth. The revenue of the HBCU goes up, Indy. As a result of the revenue going up, Charlemagne, the school's got more money. They don't have to subject themselves to closure. They don't have to subject themselves to being dependent on white money. You got HBCUs at risk of being closed. I read something that said almost a half of them. A half may not survive the decade. So this was bigger than football. This was about the survival of the HBCU. Especially, no, no, no. Stop trying to you're blaming the individual. No, you're stop trying to give celebrities a pass, Charlamagne. No, you're blaming the individual. I'm not blaming him. I'm blaming black men for not being men. But you know what? I'm blaming us for not being men. That was an unmanly move. Can you admit one thing? Dion could have went down in history, bro. HBCUs chronically underfunded. Of course. Were they chronically underfunded before Dion? Yes. yes. Were they be chronically underfunded after Dion? Yes. Absolutely. What are those reasons that they're chronically underfunded? We because we as black men have not come together to create the funding source to make sure they survive. I don't want to hear about the government. We have too many wealthy black women. You all interview them every I'm, day. I'm with you. So, so you got you got low uh don low, low donor low donor. See, in this conversation too, it feels like Charlemagne is pushing so back so hard on the Dion thing. When really the conversation could be, we need to get both. We need to get people that are into the sports that can drive the sport revenue up because we know when you think about Alabama, <clears throat> Alabama ain't this big fucking school because their educational program in Alabama is just so pristine and it's just over the top. No, Alabama football is amazing. I don't know about none of the other sports. I know Alabama football, right? Some of these other schools, is Oklahoma the greatest fucking place to go get education? And I, it ain't Stanford, it ain't Harvard, it ain't one of these goddamn schools. The sports are driving those schools, right? They may have a program. Over, I mean, oh, no, the computer science program, Oklahoma. The, okay, they may have a program. But let's be very clear that the sports programs permeate and create these schools to what they are. That's why they're so damn big. That's why they're so damn great at what they are because of sports. you talking about merch. I drive around here all the time. I live in Texas. What do I see on motherfuckers' doors, their cars? They sell the shit at Walmart. They sell the shit everywhere. 
We got Texas A&M everywhere. Motherfucker, I don't live in College Station. We got UT, UT shit everywhere. I don't live in Austin, Texas. So the, the, the sports and all that type of shit that goes with that derives a lot of money to them schools. I don't know how much of the, the budget the damn sports do, but it's a great thing. But then it's also the alumni. It's also that that have to pour back in to the schools as well. So the conversation just don't got to be one or the other to save them. You need both of these fucking things to save the school. Just like Thanos needed every infinity stone. He could have been powerful with just the power stone or the mind stone or the time. He could have been powerful with just one of them. But to be as great as you can be, you do need both. And I'm like, that's where the conversation that these two guys are having could get to. But it's so like either you're pro Dion or anti Dion that it just is like this constant, you know, back and forth thing that's going on here. Donors. Low alumni donors, okay. right? Okay. Low endowments, correct? That's, That's a us problem. He part of us. Why you keep exhibiting the celebrity? He's one person. Not better than us. He's one person. Okay, but the point is that one man could have been a catalyst for a movement that would have revolutionized the survival of HBCUs. Why, why does the movement stop just because he left? HBCUs will still be You're missing the point. No. HBCUs the abolition wasn't here. just about Frederick Douglass. But if Frederick Douglass would have pulled out, it would have hurt it. The Underground Railroad wasn't just about Harriet, but if she would have pulled out, it would have failed. So what would I, that's, what, that, that's my thing. Like I said, the, 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 the cornerstone of this conversation, there's two conversations that can be had. Yes, Dr. Umar is right. From a sports perspective, Dion pulling out is probably a wrap for them unless they get somebody like I named, one of them five people. It's a wrap, right? The people that live in Jackson State, Mississippi, will still support Jackson State. People that go to Tennessee State games, they'll still support them. People that go to Grambling games, will still support them. People that support TSU will probably still go to them. People that do PV will still go to them. Labor Day Classic, every year PV, TSU, and Houston is a big is a big fucking deal. Every year, right? Now, I don't know about every other game they play, but I know that is a big deal. So, the point isn't just to get people that go to these places to watch these games is to get everybody on the outside to come in and watch these games. More people, if, if you could look up the numbers of Jackson state viewership from let's say pre Dion to while Dion was there, you could probably see the numbers rise astronomically. And now I'll be interested to see what the post Dion era of the numbers look like. Right? So his thing is the sports can drive the traffic. The sports could drive the donation because you see, Walmart wasn't donating to Jackson State before Dion was there. That's sports. Under Armour wasn't coming in. Obviously, Under Armour is a sports athletic league, so of course they're going to do with the sports. But they weren't doing that before. So no matter how it seems like Charlamagne's trying to discount the Dion leaving and being there, it still plays a factor. Because what Charlamagne's only thinking about is just the funding of HBCU as a total. What Dr. Umar, I feel like he's arguing is the funding comes from the sports for HBCUs. Also, it could be there. And it raised the profile of these schools to where to make more people want to go to these schools, potentially. Right? So it's a multi-layered, I'm not going to play any more of it, but it's a multi-layered argument between these two guys that I feel like you need both. You need the people to come. You need grassroots. You need endowment from high-profile celebrities. You got billion, a couple billionaires who we see, they're doing great things. I think like the, the guy who's like uh, Robert Smith, he went, I think it was Howard, maybe I'm wrong, but it was HBCU, I believe. Where he pretty much paid off all their college tuition or their college loans for them going out to the world, which is a great step for them. Which you would hope that those students, now that you don't have to worry about paying off student loans going forward, that you'll pour back into your HBCU. So there is a, a you have to do the grassroots thing. If you have a local HBCU with you and you're so passionate about it, maybe you should donate to them. Maybe like me, TSU was close uh, close to home. I, I went to TSU for um, about two years. So maybe if I care so much about it, I pour back into TCU as a campus, or you create. Um, a movement around people to want to support a place like TCU. If your PV is not that far, you want to support PV, you go and support that as well. So it's a multi-layer conversation with the Dion thing. I don't think Dr. Umar is wrong, and I don't think that Charlemagne is wrong to a certain extent. It's just the people that they're, they're like, they feel like you're like attacking Dion so vehemently that it's like I have to defend him to the to the ends of the earth without seeing that. You could you could also see if you, if you even if you are the pro Dion, let him do what he does. I don't think he he stops the buck. You can understand that. With Dion leaving, there's going to be a massive effect on HBCUs. It's like it's like it's undeniable. 
if he if he created a massive change, if someone creates a massive change to an organization and they leave said organization, you could believe the massive change will most likely go back the other way. Unless the systems were in place for it to continue moving forward. And with Jackson State, the systems aren't in place for people to be like, well, fuck it, Dion's gone. I still want to commit there. I still want to stay. I still want to pour money into it. Because look at all this, like I said, look at all the celebrity fanfare that was going on around Jackson State. Are those same celebrities that was repping Jackson State, saluting Dion? Are they going to still be repping Jackson State or any other HBCU going into this football season coming up this year? Or is everybody going to go over and let's go right? Like, I would like to see, is Gillian Wallow still going to go to Jackson State and do all that motivation shit and be on the sideline in support? Or is Gillian Wallow now going to move on to Colorado? Right? Is Snoop Dogg going to go from Jack- – they're going to go to Colorado? That, that, that's the, it's easy to have these two conversations, but I feel like people are just so like – they got to be on the side. It's got to be the right side. It's like, bro, it's just an, it's an open fucking conversation. I can see how both sides have legitimate arguments to this. One, should we only be re- relying on sports and, and, and things of like that to survive HBCUs? No. Grassroots efforts. People who went there pouring back into the community. People that have the means. Wealthy black people, if you do care about the movement, to be pouring funds into these places. If you truly care about black people, then put the funds, put your money where your mouth is. Right? And a guy like Charlamagne, he can say that because he gave $250,000 of his own money to his mother's former HBCU. So he's doing it. But are other people going to, you know, pour into it and do it as well to where these schools can be long lasting and not go out. So that's all I got on that. I was going to talk about the Jerry Jones thing, the Dr. Umar, Stephen A, but yeah, I know how I feel about that. It's like, I get it. Um, I, I get it. Saying that he was 14. Y'all say, let's not hold him accountable. Or let's hold him accountable. Gives a fuck he's 14 because they bring up Emmett Till. They bring up Tamir Rice. They bring up uh, George Stein. They bring up these people who were killed uh, at these young ages and weren't given the chance to have the benefit of the doubt of being 14 years old. But that's completely different because that would the only way I feel like you can use that argument. Like if you're going to argue against racist white people that was killing these people at these young ages, that's not who you're talking about. You're talking about Stephen A. You're talking about Shannon Sharp. You're talking about um, Michael Irvin. Those guys probably wouldn't say, well, hey, they deserve to be killed like if they were saying that then that'd be different like you can compare them to the jerry jones thing but that's neither here nor there i'm off of that let's move on to some other drama some more drama shit right so i watched the whole twitch universe because i'm a person who creates content um i'm seeing maybe do i want to do type of streaming shit do i want to do this do i want to do the podcast do i let me listen what these people talking about let me listen to all this type of shit right so destiny is a streamer who is Come to more. He's been around for a very long time, but it, recently he's come to uh, more prominence. I feel like in the online community, um, just based on his streams he's had lately. Uh, he's been on No Jumper. He's been on this Sneeko shit. Kind of elevated him a little bit too <coughs> to more. Let's say the more youth flies. His fans was already his fans. He already had a big following at the time, but you could probably see the amount of views Destiny gets and the subscribers have probably increased within the past two or three months. So. He did a video reacting to the speed drama. If you don't remember uh, the speed drama, he's in uh, Qatar at the World Cup. Uh, Asian guy came up to, I believe the guy is maybe Chinese. I think that's what he said. And he was talking to him. He started doing the whole, you know, Chinese thing. And then people were very upset by it, right? Like, how could this guy keep getting away with these racist things? He's a piece of shit. Da, da, da. Racist, racist, racist. I get it, right? He's a dumb, he's a dumb fucking kid, right? He's 19. They keep trying to say 17. He's probably 19 by now. I feel like these motherfuckers have been 17 forever, right? Or maybe he's 17. I don't know how old he's been. He's, a young, he's young. He's a teenager, right? And he consistently does the internet to get more and more attention, right? And that's what he does. That's his thing. That's how he got big. So Destiny, let me just, let me, let me do it in his words, and I'll discuss what, how I feel about it. Oh, I don't even know who, this is like, I don't even know who these chairmen are, I'm not going to lie. And people are really mad. You don't know speed. It's like every now you can say, hey, you're a streamer who covers a lot of topics within the world of streaming. You should probably know who speed is. Right. I know who speed is just off social media. Right. He gets posted all the time. Blogs that I follow post him all the time when he does wild shit. He blew damn near blew up his fucking house one time. For Fourth of July, he called the police. They came and arrested him for a false report. He said, "Help me, help me!" He did the one chip challenge, do the crazy thing. He do the fake dick sucking, bouncing his ass. Thing. Like he do all these things. Right? I see things all over social media, right? But let's continue. Is this the Kai Senate guy? Oh, this is the speed guy. Okay. They got mad about that. Is that Kai Senate? Oh no, it's speed guy. 
Like, bro, it's just a. I, I just don't. I'll get to the cast night video, but let it go. There's like, like this whole new legion of like black Zoomer streamers. And for as much as they fucking sc- talk about how like all white people did was scream at the fucking camera, um, I feel like that's all these guys do. I have, I don't know. Um, I don't know if they have more content, but holy shit. So boom, that, that got, that clip, that got clipped, went out to the internet. People went insane. He said in the clip, like, the Legion of Young Black Zoomer streamers, which is like the very youthful, like Speed 19, Kai Snats 20, um, all they do is scream, right? And back in the day, I guess you say all these white boys do is play the game and scream, which they probably did. I don't understand how people are mad about this because they say it's a generalization, right? It's a generalization, but how are you mad? If you were to not know who these guys are, right? Not watch their content at all. And even as a fan, genuinely, you can say to the mass public who don't watch these guys, the only time they may see these guys, which could be, you know, not even wrong, but like this is what it is. That shit that goes viral. Is of them doing wild, crazy shit while screaming. Now, I've seen a couple of Kai's in that streams. He does more than just screaming shit, right? He reacts to shit. He uh, has people come over, like the whole little sleepover shit he be doing. He got... Blue face in the building, he got 21 in the building, he got a little baby. So he does more content type things. But you can also admit that the things that probably have elevated his career as far as like just being visible on social media have to do with just wilding out. And that's entertaining. There's nothing wrong with that. It's entertaining. You have to get on here and fucking slap shit and do shit and be entertaining because the people on the other side of the mic don't give a fuck. Now, those people like Destiny who can just sit there and, you know, hey, you know, the this and that and then. But the, the draw of Destiny isn't his energy. The draw of Destiny is just his intellect. People are drawn in by his intellect. And that's not to say that Kai and them are stupid, but Kai and Speed aren't doing this type of shit. Kai and Speed are there for the entertainment of things. They're reacting to videos with their fans that their fans like. They're playing the games. They're doing sketches. They're doing this. They're doing interactive things to create entertainment in that type of way. That's like, that's not me dismissing them. It's like, hey, there's a comedian and then there's also a guy who does fucking new, nightly news. Like those people are going to be uh, completely different in the way that they do things, right? That's just what it is. It's not one's greater than the other. That's what they. That's how Speed and them have to do to entertain you guys. Speed smashing his fucking control on the table, going fucking crazy, knocking the shit over. That's what we know Speed for. What are you known for, right? A lot of people are known for things that they might not do the entire, the entire show. I saw Kai Snatch stream. He streamed, I don't know if he streamed every day, 10 hours, a, a, 10 hours. Do I think all Kai does in that 10 hours is fucking scream and go crazy? No. But you can assure out of that 10 hours, the most viral shit is of him turning up, dancing or whatever. That's what it is. Literally, after this drama, let me see if I can pull this shit up real quick. After this drama, the next Kai Sinat um, viral thing that came out was Kai Sinat going crazy. Bro, why is she not working? Don't do this to me. Did the battery fall out, the motherfucker? Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Yeah. Okay, boom. Here we go. It's back on. Anyways, the viral thing that just came out about Kai was him screaming and going crazy because uh, SZA, SZA saw his shit. Or SZA reposted him on his story. So let me go to this page called uh, Dick's Terror. They usually have all like the streamer, the streamer shit on there. And let's just take a look, right? Let's just, let's just look. What shit goes viral? <laughs> he go, like, what are we talking about? He's going fucking crazy. It's entertaining. There's nothing wrong with it. That's it. That's I think that's I think I think it's people think that Destiny says something wrong with it, I guess. He's kinda belittling these guys into this. I don't have no I like Kai I salute him, he's the best streamer of the year. He blew up, he got look he got ninety fucking thousand people that subscribe to shit. He making fucking money off of doing the shit that he's doing. So whatever he's doing is uh whatever he's doing is apparently working for him, right? So boom, there's that. Obviously, Destiny gets labeled. You know what? Let, let's go to uh, 
Let's go to Kasanet. Kasanet did respond to this. Let's take a look at it, man. I'm not gonna act like you don't know who was who, dickhead. You obviously know who the fuck I am and who the fuck Speed is. You clearly said this. I don't know if they have more content. Let me tell you something, bro. Like, th this is the, the Twitter comments in a fucking... Like, this is the... this is, this is is if, if Twitter comments was a person, this is what it is. Bro, I don't know if they have more content, but let me go ahead and hate on them for what I see. Hey, 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 you listen to me, bitch. I don't know who the fuck you are. I don't know what you do. But do your fucking research before you say shit, and clearly you are a racist, but guess what? I don't that, that's, that's the only thing about, like, I don't get how that makes you, is it like white guys saying black Zoomer streamers and generalizing just a black a group of black kids and what they do? But like, bro, that's what most people, like, most people think that, Speed, for instance, Speed, they be like, he's unfunny, all the fuck he does is bark and does this and that. It's not to say that that's all he does because he fucking streams like every day for hours and hours. And but the shit that goes viral, like that's what you see. So people are just gonna say hey, that must be what he does. That's the shit that make you famous. Ho ho ho, doing all that. That's what made you famous. It, it's okay to say that. I just don't. I just don't, I think maybe Kai is being a little bit sensitive on that one. And maybe I guess Destin, you could say, is being a little dismissive. Of the rise of these guys, but if you're just gonna strictly base your opinion of these guys off of social media, and even as fans of these guys, you gotta admit the shit that you see go viral is like screaming shit, celebration shit, dance shit, bouncing off the fucking walls, going crazy. But I think that doesn't have to be a bad thing, because like I just said, Kasane got ninety thousand people subscribed to his Twitch, and I did the calculations already, right? I do the calculations again for you guys right here. If Kasanet is getting 90,000 people subscribing to his to his Twitch channel, 9169, let's say it's what $5 to do that, to do that on Twitch to to subscribe. I don't know what split he has. Let's say he has the 50/50 split with Twitch, right? So let's just multiply that by $2.50. That means Kyle would possibly make it that much. But salute to that young black king for making that goddamn money doing what he do. I find them entertaining. I don't have a problem with they screaming or whatever. But you cannot deny that on social media the clips that go viral of, of these at least these two guys. I don't know about anybody else. I don't really like I don't like I don't necessarily watch or pay attention to like the Bruce Drop Off guy. I know he's big. Every time I see on Twitch, he's on the side live. He got like 20,000 views. Salute to that king. There's your rage. He's been around forever, but your rage got famous or popular because he used to not show his face. And he used to be wilding the fuck out screaming. Like, what are we talking about? That's what what are we talking about, bro? I, is it just because a white guy saying this? Like, we got to get past that bullshit. We got to get past the bullshit. Any viral video you see of Speed, he wilding out, he either fake sucking dick, bouncing his ass, screaming, going wild, going crazy, breaking shit, tearing his damn house up, or doing this an incre incredibly crazy fucking stunt. On You just watch Speed on social media. You tell me a clip of Speed that has went viral, of Speed just sitting down and just talking like just... Hey guys, you know this is going on. Da, 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 whatever. Like, just stop it, man. I I get it. I get it. But come on. I don't give a fuck. That's you. That got something to do with you. I will be mad if black niggas is taking control right now. I will be mad if I was a racist and black niggas got motion right now, nigga. I will be furious, nigga. I will be furious, nigga. I'll be so mad. Ooh, I Where did Kai get the race? Just, just, just I'm just asking, genuine question. Race just because he's white and he said black Zoomer streamers. Like, is that the only part that's racist? And also, this is one thing I hate about the internet. The one thing I fucking hate about the internet is anytime you give a critique about somebody, let me, you know what I'm gonna do is come and clip this. Anytime, one thing I hate about the internet is anytime you critique something, right? You're deemed as hating on said thing. You know the one thing I hate about that is? When I give a commentary about an album I don't like, right? And people say you're just hating. That boils my blood because, like, I don't want to be a rapper. This album succeeding or not succeeding does nothing for me. I'm just giving you my opinion. I'm not hating. I'm not a hater. I'm not jealous. I, I just really don't like it, right? And even when De even with Kai Sinat's synopsis of this whole thing is, you mad that these black kids got motion, right? Kai, huge. Speed got like 14 million fucking YouTube followers. 14, I think. In a year. He got banned from Twitch, came to YouTube and throbbed. He gained million. He was getting, at one point, he was getting like a million a week. Like, boom, 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 going crazy. Bruce dropped my mind. I just said 20,000 people watching him live. Right? Your age, booming. Now, 
I'm gonna be not, I don't know besides those four, those to me are the top four. Y'all can name anybody else in the chat that y'all may know that's booming like that on, on, a, on, on for the black creators. But as far as streamers goes, Kaisenat, Speed. Um, uh, I know Aiden wants to be black, but he's white. Um, Kai, Speed, Your Rage, and Bruce. And even maybe not even Your Rage that level. I'd say Bruce. I'm Dante. I don't know if I'm Dante streams much, but I'm Dante was big, but he got big on YouTube first. But anyways, my point being is, I don't say you can just label it as racist because one, Destiny, even if even if y'all booming in this Twitch space, right? Y'all doing this crazy shit. The audience that he has, I don't think he's competing with their audience. Because they have their audience already. He's not competing with the youth that want to just see people having fun, enjoying themselves, reacting to music, reacting to videos, bringing in sketches, bringing in celebrities, doing all that type of shit, watching Omegles and all that. Do whatever the fuck they do on those streams. His audience ain't that, so y'all aren't competing for market share in that thing. Now, you can possibly say, and I still hate this too, even when you critique somebody in your own industry they say you're hating you want to be them but like if he was shitting on like Hassan you maybe have more of an argument right oh Hassan's fucking blowing up he has 50,000 people watching us live they're in the same political realm like you could do that but for Destiny y'all's audience and his audience are probably so far apart from each other that it doesn't even matter what y'all do over there on that side y'all could be blowing up be the biggest on Twitch but that probably doesn't do his viewership because y'all have a high viewership so that, that's just one thing I'm thinking about with that. So, anyways. Oh, come on this shit and say whatever I gotta say. I will say what I I don't know you from a fucking can of paint, but guess what? Guess what I know? You can eat my dick, nigga. Fuck! Like, bro, it's like, bro, I don't know who niggas be thinking they are, but it's either you get with the program or you stay out the fucking way. That's what's up. Get with the program or you stay out the fucking way, nigga. Eat a nigga dick, you mad, eh? Uh -huh. Fuck! Like, who the fuck is this nigga? And it's so crazy because these niggas are not even in the community. Like, the niggas in the community just have the, the most to say. Like, we don't even be doing nothing to y'all in our community. I've never seen a nigga from our community directly hate on y'all niggas, like, solely. Niggas scream, okay. Niggas do this, okay. Niggas talk a little too loud, okay. But this 17-year-old nigga, this 17-year-old right here is doing better than you in every category. You are by Right now. Every category. You understand me? And if you gotta say otherwise, be entitled to that, bro. I don't even know who you are, bro, so I'm not even gonna talk too much on you. And I don't even know what community you're in. I don't even know what you do, but I'll be fucking damned if I was racist. And a nigga is actually how old is how old is he? So that that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Like I think Kai's response was a little like you know, I mean very emotionally charged because I don't think it was that. Like I don't I, maybe because I don't look at shit serious. I think a lot of people look at shit uh, on. On the internet, it's like, end of the world, right? It's like, oh, my God. I see like XQC come out, and he's speaking out against them. Hassan, obviously, they got their little beef. They came out, he's speaking out against Destiny. Like, does that... The bar, for the bar, in my opinion, for racism is so goddamn low at this point. Like, anything is just deemed as, as racist at this point. Like, the bar is just set so low for racism in, in, in 2022. Now, can you probably find a clip of Destiny saying some wild, edgy shit? I'm sure. But just in regards to this clip, I just don't see, I don't see why it blew up so much. And even Kyle like shitting on this. Who the fuck are you? I don't know. Like the the reason that it went crazy and you're seeing it is because Destiny has to be somebody, right? Like it ain't, it, the shit ain't just going wild, crazy viral because he's a nobody loser fucking streamer that nobody listens to. Obviously, he has to be somebody. And I wouldn't expect Kai to know Destiny because he probably even he's twenty. When I was twenty. I didn't even know the difference from goddamn because like, you can say, oh, you're a fucking idiot, but I wasn't even paying attention to politics. I didn't start genuinely paying attention to politics until like Trump became the president. I'm like, okay, what is this? That happened? This? Okay. I didn't hear these words. Oh, you're concerned. I, I'm not, and I don't give a fuck. I'm not listening to that shit. So I'm not surprised Kai don't know him. But also, I wouldn't be surprised if Destiny doesn't indulge in the world that Kai and Speed live in and just knowing, like, okay, I know who the two top black guys in this realm are, Speed and Kai, and I can get their name mixed up. I, I can see how that could happen. So. Just bring the peace, man. Everybody just come together, have, sit down, and, you know, have a good uh, powwow with each other. So, two more things I'm going to get about here. So, I'll talk about this. So, the FBI leaked some, some information uh, the other day that showed that a Jewish defense league was partaking in extortion by rappers, right? Now, I don't know why the reason that this was released to the public now, the investigation took place in 1997, uh, a couple years after Easy e and Tupac were already dead. So 
let's just let's just look at this, right? So this is the actual document from the FBI. If you think I'm lying, you can see at the top right there where it says vault.fbi.gov. You ain't got a .gov unless you legit .gov. So this is legitimate paperwork uploaded by the FBI in response to what's going on with the JDL. Don't get it confused with the ADL. This is the Jewish Defense League, not the Anti-Defamation League. So anyways, for information of receiving offices on October 17, 1996, a preliminary inquiry was initiated at Los Angeles field offices to corroborate source information that blank, blank, a known organized crime figure, along with a group of unidentified individuals, were utilizing death threats in the furtherance of extortion attempts targeted towards two former prominent rap musicians from the L.A. area and other victims yet unidentified. JDL and others yet unidentified have been extorting money from various rap music stars via death threats. The scheme involves Blank and other subjects making telephonic death threats to the rap star. Subjects then intercede by contacting the victim and offering protection for a fee. Source reported that Eric Wright, also known as Easy e who owned Ruthless Records, Woodland Hills, California, was a victim of this extortion scheme prior to dying from AIDS, had also reported targeted Tupac Shakur prior to his recent murder in Las Vegas. Now, I'm not saying the Jewish Defense League is the one that killed these people. It just goes to show that all these people ain't good people. That's all I'm saying. Like, and I think people know that. People know all Jewish people ain't good people, but like, this is another thing. Like, hey, this is a, this is a league. Like, this is the people that are out here extorting our black creators. And you don't think there could be plants of these people within these record labels? Like I said, I ain't saying everybody bad. Does that mean to be thinking that everybody? I don't, I don't think all white people bad. I don't think all Mexican people bad. I don't think all white people, uh, black people, uh, Asian people. Anyway, I don't think all groups are bad. But you know, there's obviously some bad seeds in this group, and this group is looked at as a hate group according to the the Seventy Poverty Law Center. So this is according to Seventy Poverty Law Center. So Jewish Defense League, the Jewish uh, Defense League, is a radical organization that preaches a violent form of anti-Arab Jewish nationalism. Its late founder, Rabbi Mayor K, I don't know how to say his name, claimed that Jews face fierce anti-Semitism domestically and abroad and must protect themselves by any means necessary. So I'm not really trying to compare these two brothers to each other, right? But you can say that the ADL is like the Martin and the JDL is like the Malcolm. Like, fuck, but Malcolm in his early, not Malcolm is late, but Malcolm in the, you know, whatever time. Fuck that. They fucking with us. We about to fuck them up. And I would wonder how many people was behind this at the time. Like, who, who, what, like, were they supporting this a lot more than maybe the ADL? Because ADL been around since like 18 or 1912. So the JDL's position in regards to Israel is denial of any Palestine claims land calling for the removal of all Arabs from the Jewish inherited soil, which today will be deemed as very racist, very whatever the fuck you want to call it. So the group has orchestrated countless terrorist attacks in the U.S. and abroad and has engaged in intense harassment of foreign diplomats, Muslims, Jewish scholars, and community leaders and officials. To turn the other cheek is not a Jewish concept. Do not listen to soothing anesthesia of the establishment. They walk in the paths of who's timidly helped bury our brothers and sisters less than 30 years ago. In the end, few exceptions, the Jew can look to no one but another Jew for help. And the true solution for the Jewish people is the liquidation of the exile and return of all Jews to Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel. So, this is a little background on them and what they were. When I first saw it, I was like, was well, this like a lawyer organization? I, was, I mean, maybe it's not something think that Jews are lawyers, but they are lawyers. But um, I was like, is this like a, a branch of like the ADL? But I guess to these people, this is a hate group that you have to watch. And they were extorting rap musicians throughout the early 90s, trying to get money from them, possibly because they knew they could, and hitting them with death threats, and then charging them fake fees for the protection, right? So, oh shit, somebody wants to kill me. We're going to charge you a fee so that we're going to protect you. So you can look these guys up, run through it, um, and run through there, you know, how they feel about other groups, black people, Arabs, all type of information that goes on. They're not deemed worthy um, of being discussed, right? I'm, I'm assuming the ADL would probably hate these people as well, but I don't know. I don't know. So I just wanted to highlight that because I thought that was a, a crazy story that there was a Jewish defense league that was being investigated by the FBI for trying to extort rappers and give them fake death threats. And then, you know, a couple years later, these rappers die. All right? But anyways, I'm not saying they did it, but I mean, fuck the Jewish defense league. They're already, y'all, if y'all label them as a thing, I can't be anticipated because y'all already label them as hateful. So yeah, fuck them. I'm going to vote by the Jewish defense league. They're some hoes. So anyways, last thing I want to talk about this journalist that was um, killed. No, no, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me rewind. I don't know if he was killed or not. But he died while he was in Qatar at the World Cup. His name was uh, 
what's his name? Grant Wall, right? So Grant Wall died of what they say, people say in a heart attack. So he's watching the World Cup final in Doha after he was detained for wearing a rainbow shirt as USA match as his brother says he was murdered and his former Biden aide wife says she is in complete shock. So American journalist Grant Wall, uh, recipes to him, uh, has died while covering the 22 Qatar Cup, or World Cup in Qatar. He was 48 years old. Wall, who covered American and world soccer on the Substack, CBS Sports, NBC News, and previously worked for Sports Illustrated, was healthy, quote unquote healthy, before he collapsed. During Game Friday, according to brother Eric in his screen video he posted, his agent, Tim Scanlon, told the New York Times that Wall had gone to acute distress in the final minutes of the quarterfinal, which he was covering for the Press Tribune. U.S. media sitting near him said Wall fell back in the seat in the media tribune in uh, Lucille Iconic Stadium during extra time, and reporters adjacent to him called for assistance. Emergency service workers responded very quickly. The reporter said, and the reporters later were told that Wall had died. Eric, who is gay, said through tears that he believes his brother, who had been detained before the United States tournament opener against Wales for wearing a rainbow shirt, may have been killed. So let's just go to the clip of his brother discussing this. Wall, I live in Seattle, Washington. I am Grant Wall's brother. I am gay. I am the reason he wore the rainbow shirt to the World Cup. My brother was healthy. He told me he received death threats. I do not believe my brother just died. I believe he was killed. And I just beg for him. My name is- I ain't gonna lie to you. Now you guys have recipes to family, prayers to family. But that just off first glance looked like some like fake like that just looked like some fake shit, right? It looked like you're trying to throw into a pot that your brother was murdered to create like a storyline surrounding yourself. That that to me that's what it looks like. Yeah, does that look like a real person like in distress and crying? Not me. We can watch it again to see. Eric Wall. I live in Seattle, Washington. I am Grant Wall's brother. I am gay. Who's he gonna hold with? And the reason he wore the rainbow shirt to the World Cup. Just that part, like like that. All right. But Ross, his brother did die, so rest in peace to him. I'm not like trying to diminish his brother's death. But that's the narrative going around. That's they keep that's everybody keeps trying to push. They're trying to push that it was a murder. It was like a setup by the I guess you could say the Qatari government that killed him uh for those things. But like my, my thing would be like, why would the Qatari government wait till now to kill him? All right? He he tried to get him with the rainbow shirt, because I guess like this guy said, because his brother's gay. And obviously Qatar is is, is illegal to be a homosexual in their country. Um, but why not kill him earlier? Do you think, oh, maybe it'd be too obvious if we killed him. Do you think the Qatar government cared so much to to kill this guy? Like, it was that big of a deal for them? Like, they were so mad that this happened, that they wanted... I, I, I think that's highly unlikely. We've been seeing a lot of stories of people just dropping from heart attacks who are seemingly just these healthy people. And I'm not getting into... The, y'all could get into the conspiratorial rabbit hole of why people think this is going on. I'm not going to say, but y'all can look into it. Uh, and I'm not even saying that's why, but I'm just saying y'all can look into why people are saying this is going on and you can kind of correlate why, what people think. But anyways, my point is, um, I think it's kind of irresponsible for the brother to come out and say, this. like, oh, I think he was murdered because he wore the shirt because of me and da 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 this and that. But I was like, my thought process on that is the beginning of the Qatar thing. When people are so mad, we're boycotting this, we're going to try to get these people out of here, we hate this, we hate it. I think as Americans, we're so like, obnoxious to think that we could just go to other countries and do shit. They tell us they don't do like we can't make them do what we do. If they don't agree with that, whether religious or whether just the historical times or how they live, we can't force them to do that. So why go out of your way, especially in the threat of arrest? Like I'm not, we see what's going on. Brittany Griner and um, this guy got arrested now, ran that was a legal like scientist and all this shit. And he was citizen for like, why do we keep going to these fucking countries Picking with these people because they don't believe in the same shit we believe. We wouldn't want them coming over here trying to press their shit on us. So let's leave them alone. We can think that it's tragic. Oh, damn, you're gay in Qatar. I feel bad for you. You know what I'm saying? Like You can't be yourself. People are trying to persecute you and this and that. And all, all these things going on. But why are we feel obligated to go into other people's stuff and fuck with them? And I don't think that's why he died. So I'm not saying that's why he died. But my point is still, even like to go of the threat of getting arrested, your job is an analyst to report on soccer, right? And if you know you can enter this game to do your job, oh, you can watch on TV, but enter, your, enter, enter this game and do your job because you want to protest in a country that don't give a fuck about your protest. Why are you doing that? Don't make sense. 
And for the life of me, I'll never understand why we think that we as Americans have the moral high ground over anybody else to tell anybody else what they can and cannot do. After everything, all, all our history, we got the moral high ground to tell everybody what they can and cannot do. I don't understand it. I don't get it. Um, and I don't know the reason this guy died. Obviously, the autopsy is going to show what happened to this guy. And if there is some foul play, then as a government, we probably should hold the Qatari government uh, responsible for what happened. Or maybe even not the Qatari government. But who knows who it was? It could have been a Qatari person who don't like gay. Like, let's just say, let's, let's, go, let's just take it to the, to the minute detail. of it. Let's just say he probably was getting death threats. Because they already announced before that shit came out. Like, hey, we're not doing the pride thing. And you come to their country, and to them, that's an act of disrespect, open disrespect to those people. Now, do I think that, do, do I think that death should be the, the, the qualifier for that? Hell no. For what? Because I'm wearing a pride. Like, relax, bro. Shit, maybe it was a Qatari bartender that just served the guy a drink. And they're like, I hate that you came to my country and did that shit. I, there's probably radical people out there that's like that. So it may not be the Qatari government, but my, my point is, if we're going to go with the narrative that it was a, a hit, it was a murder, it was some type of thing, just, it's not justified, but like, bro, don't go to people's countries and be fucking around. Because his narrative is that, because I'm going off the brother's narrative, the brother's narrative is he wore the gay shirt, or the pride shirt, they don't like that, he gained death threats, now he's dead. So that, that's, his, that's his brother's belief. And my thing is, if that did happen, that's kind of, like, that's an extreme. Like, I wear a pride shirt, you kill me. That's an extreme. But also... Me personally, I'm not going to other countries to push their line on shit I already know. They already expressed from the beginning they don't get down with. I think that may be just like American American ego that we think we could do that in other places. So, still in the day, rest in peace, this guy. He probably had a family, he had kids, and it's, it's tragic anybody dying. But my response really to the brother and him like, oh, my brother got murdered for the prize. I was like, bro, don't go over there with that shit. Like, just don't do it. So anyways, make sure you guys are not subscribed already. SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes. Appreciate you for being here. Appreciate you for the support. we going up. we out 500 subscribers already. we pushing for 600. Let's get to sub and let's do all that. I'll see you guys tomorrow. It's your boy D-Friend. Peace. <laughs>